this week? Yeah, I'm, I'm back to the football because the football people are complaining that I'd spent uh, too much on other are sports we? disciplines. Because <laughs> I started with Patrick Awea, who's yeah. a football uh, person. Yeah. Then I went through <coughs> Davis Kamogelwada, right. Catherine Adipo, who was volleyball and refereeing. I went through okay. Mary Musoke, who was table tennis, and John Duque, who was tennis and things. And football mm. guys were saying, but well, 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 I said, I'm coming back. Well, we'll I, I am coming back. So I thought, who do I start with among the footballers? Because yeah. the, the, there's so many uh, legends that we have, <coughs> uh, dead and alive. And I, was, I, I really, really struggled with this one to pick which one I start with. Because if I am going to do this, for the next 10 years, then I'll cover them. But okay. <laughs> it's got stuff to do. But anyway, I went with Issa Sekatawa. Oh. The reason I went with Issa Sekatawa is that he's one of the greatest goal scorers Uganda has ever seen. Uh, some, some might say greatest. Mm. And let me put it in perspective before I even start the story. Issa Sekatawa um, was top scorer in the, in three, three times in a row in the league. 81, 82, and 83. Only one other player did it in Ugandan football, and that was Hassan Mubiru. Okay. 2001, 2003, you remember? Yeah. For Art Express. Sure. Uh, although Majid Mosisi won more Golden Boots, he won four. Yeah. 87, 89, 91, 92. Uh, and also Mathias Kawesa won three for mm. three different clubs, which is a unique record yeah, of its own. Yeah. In Sambia, Kofi Villa. Yeah. The last one for Villa in 93. Uh, but Sekatawa won three in a row on, on, on the trot. And at that point, at that time, in the early 80s, he became, well, he became called Golden Boy. Soccer tabu, goals are my business. This is a guy at that time who even landed a deal with uh, butter. Mm. And uh, those. The shoe manufacturer. Yeah, yeah. Those mm. shoes that, we, that people used to use back then, uh, what we call old school now because they've come back into, into trend somehow, uh, started back then those small little canvas shoes which um, were, were casual wear but were used by tennis players and basketballers and everybody before we had the high tops and things. Those shoes were cool. they were called Sekatars because of this guy's prolific nature and how Butter mm -hmm. saw the brand in him. He was so big in this region, um, his name reverberated around mm -hmm. and it still does. I'll tell you uh, one or two small tales which shows you how big that name got at, at some point. But this is a guy born the year we got our independence, 1962, in Bugerere. Mm. Yeah, somewhere just after Kayunga. Eh? Mm -hmm. Kayunga. His uh, father. Uh, his father was Idris Ansubuga, Haji Idris Ansubuga, uh, Katambala. He had come from Mutambala and shifted to Bugerere. Why? The Kabaka had given him land. He was one of his favorite people. Which Kabaka? Mutesa won mm. because he was his favorite driver. He had been part of the soldiers. He had, he had been a Mumboa mm. and then became his driver. And he loved him so much, gave him land that side. So Sekata was there. But then Sekata did not grow up so much with his father because his uncle, who was Yahaya Sali. Sekatawa, by the way, calls me Konja, even if you ask him. Because mm. uh, his mother was Namuli and his uncle, yes, they, were, they were from the Chima clan, mm. his, his uh, mother's side. So that uncle took him away. That uncle was a driver for uh, Brigadier Ali Fadul. Did you ever hear of that guy during the Amin's, uh, Amin's era? No, I, a, a I know so many, so many generals from so Amin's Sekatawa region, not him. Yeah, so Sekatawa became the nomad. nomad. Lived, they lived in Moroto because this guy was living where the, the brigadier was, in which barracks he went to. And so he went to school in those barracks. Moroto, Jinja, Kampala, and Barara, back to Kampala, Jinja, like that. But somewhere along the way, his football story started. He started playing football when he was in Barara mm. at that time. And there was a very exciting young team, which was very good, uh, for where he played. And guess who got him out of there? Your uncle. The late Tuaha Kakaire. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who I know is your uncle. Is it yeah. your uncle? Yeah, he is. He yeah, is, who, who is. just laid to rest laid to a few rest months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So Tuaha Kakaire was the, the team manager at Naitil then. Very, very powerful team, Naitil. So yeah. Sekatawa left uh, in 79, left uh, Barara. In 1980, joined Naitil. And mm. for me, that's where the Sekatawa story now starts. <laughs> starts yeah, okay. I didn't know about him, but I always knew about Naitil. Naitil, yeah. yeah. So at Naitil, he got there. This was a very good team. Mm. Sekatawa kept company at night with people like um, Philip Musoke Maradona, mm. who eventually played at Express. You heard of him. Yeah. Uh, people like uh, uh, Frank uh, Lukoma, who was the br older brother of uh, Stephen Bogere. Mm -hmm. uh, people like uh, um, James Koyo, your people like even Francis Kulabego. Mm. was one of those guys who had come out of prison. You know, guys who had been locked up in Abin's time, including yeah. uh, Paul Sally, those keeper, the keeper, yeah. and those guys. Mm. They come out of prison, so you're there, yeah. So um, that, those, those are the guys he was playing with, um, and uh, Ntale and all those guys uh, at Nighthill formed a very strong team. When he first got there, he was only a super sub. 
because he was a new guy, young, come from there. But every time he stepped on the pitch, he scored. Yeah. He, I mean, this guy was that prolific. So he fought his way into the first team and, um, and, and became a starter. He, he attributes his goal scoring because we have we, Ugandan football has scarcely seen a finisher like, the, like him. Yeah. Uh, every time he stepped onto the pitch, he scored virtually, uh, well, at least at the peak of his powers, because there was a time when the goals dried up, mm -hmm. as I'll tell you. But uh, he attributes that to the fact that, I mean, he was a hard worker, a trainer. He mm -hmm. used to train hard, but he also used to pray hard. It was mm -hmm. most, most, most for him. So everything is for him is about God. So even when guys uh, to a point in Ugandan football started thinking that he, he was using witchcraft or some sorcery, because <laughs> I mean, the guy walked on, the ball always went to where he was and he put it in the back of the net. Head, uh, left foot, right foot, mm -hmm. back, yes. whatever, tongue, I think even his tongue. <laughs> <scored. laughs> uh, think, yeah, so <laughs> that, that's, that, that was just so 1981, now he really hits it, 19, at 90. Top scorer in the league, like I told you, 19 mm. goals, um, really shining. So, um, Haji Abdul Maweji, there had been some sort of coup at Express. The guy, mm. There was a changing of guard there. So, this guy who had taken over, was a guy called Abdul Maweji, goes and gets him out of night and brings him to Express. And uh, so they tell him that, but to this guy, to get the best out of him, you need a fast flying <coughs> wing and everything. So, he goes back to Nile. And gets who? Fred Mukasa, Gasso, the man they called Gasso, the yeah. man who would, who would, uh, uh, who who's attributed for almost fifty percent of Sekatawa's Gold. assists in yeah. the domestic league. But this is how big Sekatawa had become in the 1981 before crossing Water Express. Let me tell you a small, small story. 1981, Sekatawa was so big, uh, he had grown so big. The derbies uh, between Nile and Nightingale were a national a thing to behold in Bugembe. A yeah, people used to go to drive from Kampala to go to Bugembe and pitch camp there just so they could catch that, as if ginger people didn't want to watch it themselves. So you yeah. can imagine how tough it was. Burundi came here, the national team of Burundi, came to Uganda for friendly. They, they played against the Krenzi in Nachivo, drew 0 0. Sekatawa did not play in that game because they wanted him to play a game in Bugembe in front of his fans. Wow. So, what did they do? Burundi plays Night Hill. The guys I've just told you about, the, the Lukomas, the, the, those guys, the, mm -hmm. the names I just read, read off, the Philip Musoke, Madaduna um, Zanor. They play a game there and Sekatawa scored the winner in mm -hmm. that game against there. Uh, but but it, was, it had gone crazy. Everybody, people pitched camp. People drove from Kampala to go and watch Sekatawa play. That's how big he was. So, got into the cranes, started scoring goals. So, like I've told you, Haji Maweje takes him out of uh, uh, 19. 19. brings him to Express 1982. Uh, but he was still living in Ginger. Came here as, uh, scoring goals for Express, left, right, and center. Top scorer in the league, 22 goals that mm. year. Mm. Um, and then, uh, then uh, Maweje gets him out of Ginger, brings him to start living in Kampala. This man was he owned hotels called Tourist back then. Mm. So Sekata was living on Kampala Road there in a tourist hotel, in this man's hotel and everything, scoring goals, 82, 83, scoring goals. Now, Express unfortunately didn't win the title in those years, but they had become star-studded. This guy, actually Express led to the ruining of United in a sense. Mm. The guys I just told you about, Musoke Maradona, Ntale, Nkoyoyo, eventually, all those guys ended up at Express. And remember, they took Fred Mukasa Gasso out of Nile as well, as well to yeah. bring him here. And this is the guy who used to uh, run like, uh, like hell down the wing and cross the ball for Sekatawa, fall off the pitch the other side, and Sekatawa would nod it in. Mm. Uh, I, I, saw, I, I mean, I witnessed that myself Akuma later. Cross in Aguere in Bikata. I saw that in the late 80s. Yeah. Uh, they were still doing it uh, up to when, when I started uh, going to the league games. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, so what happened is that, uh, so he hit his peak. Then scored loads of goals, um, played uh, for the Cranes, uh, made a name in the region. That Golden Boy thing used to sound everywhere. Zambia, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Kenya, Tanzania, everywhere. Oh, who named him Golden Boy? Yeah, he, he, for him, he, he, he says it happened at some point in an international in Zambia oh. uh, when he scored. But uh, you have to understand that uh, uh, <coughs> the second house member is a, a bit of jogging yeah. <laughs> here and there under the circumstances now. Uh, he's uh, he's got, got on a little bit mm. and, um, and, and all, and the, the rubbish of time and things mm -hmm. like that but anyway so thankfully I, I, I could remember some of the things he couldn't and uh, of course you always um, have ways of, of getting the, the, the information so anyway mm -hmm. 84 um, he, he starts to get on the win a bit I think injuries were getting in there and all mm -hmm. but then one other thing also crept into the, his game at the time even if he did confess it to me yeah, I, I knew it from elsewhere um, he started ma making disappearing arts going to play in Tanzania, him and Fred Mkasagaso and things like that. Mm. So 85, actually, what happened is that they, would, they disappeared and went and played in Tanzania. Uh, Mkasagaso came back in time for the Kakungulu Cup semi-final 
and uh, then also played for Express in the final. Even if he had been stripped of the captain, so they gave it to Paul Nkata. Mm. At least Mukasa Gasso won the Kakungu Cup with Express in 85. Now, remember, it was a very big deal. Express had spent a lot of money and brought the superstars in, but they were not winning. Villa was winning the titles, and when they did it, KCC was winning them. Like 81 and 83 was KCC, 82 mm. was Villa, 84 mm. Villa. Yeah. And then from then on, you remember hard happening. Yeah. So that title was very important because for Sekatawa did not win a domestic title until 1991, as you will hear. Um, yet this is the man who had been top scorer in the league in 81, had already been shining in the league with 1980. So he didn't win a single domestic trophy until 91 because of things like that. So he, does, he started disappearing, I know, those disappearing acts. So what happened is that, uh, that uh, 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 the, the coach who had been there, uh, Henry Bego, uh, they were not happy with the three out. They brought George Mukasa in from Villa. Uh, the Express because this guy was not winning with the stars, the stars he had to his mm. disposal. And uh, then so Sekatawa, the, the, his, star, his star was waning, the goals were dropping and all. Then Express brought in Robert Chiveru. This guy had been coaching at AFC Leopards. In, uh, in, I think you've heard of the late Robert Chiveru. Yeah. He had been coaching in Leopards. In, oh, he's also coached the Cranes. Yeah, in, mm. uh, in, 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 in Kenya. So he came back. So he said, me, I can't have Sekatawa here. Uh, injury prone, big headed, uh, disappearing acts, things like that, and also have got Vekatelega, the late, yeah. it's right superstar. Face. Yeah, superstar, yeah. who was even bigger headed and things. <laughs> yeah. So, who was to be cut? Yeah. Zekatawa. He was cut in 88. I um, mean, Chiberu decided to just keep the one. So, Zekatelega stayed. 88. Alex Chisego, one of the, the big mm -hmm. boys of Uganda football at the time. It, you know, it was a, a, the era of strong men. I mm -hmm. talked about Kawaya the other day you had. I've just talked about Adam mm -hmm. Dubai One day we'll be talking yeah. Moses instead of Kawaya. Yeah, I'm going to talk about yeah, all of those. Yeah, even <laughs> yeah. at the pond of yeah. KCC. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about those guys. Yeah. And uh, I'll talk about Kasim Buyond of Express and mm -hmm. the things that happened back then. The strong men, the, the, the culture which brought about later the Franco Mugabe's and the Mandela's and the Chilomiras. And even Godfrey Chilomiras. And the Chilomiras. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, we had that culture from back then. But anyway, so. Um, Alex Chisego takes Sekatawa to coffee. Mm. Uh, he goes there, scores a few goals. They say, then people tell him, but you, man, you can't bring Sekatawa and not bring Fred Mukasa Gasso. He's useless without him. So Chisego goes back to Express. This is, I'm taking 89 eight, 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 now. And they buy, eight, eight, he buys Fred, got Fred Mukasa for oh, Gasso for one million shillings. Mm. This was just after the currency reforms of 87. You heard of those at least? Yes, I do. Where zeros were chopped, when uh, after yeah. President Museveni had taken over the currency yeah. reforms and the zeros that were chopped off, Tough, yeah. people's figures and all. So one million was a big, big deal yeah. in the late 80s. That's what Kofi bought Mukasa for from, uh, from Express. But even Mukasa's arrival at Kofi did not uh, raise the gold numbers. He was getting about seven here, eight there and all, which were really low by the standards of a man like Sekatawa. So they also cut him. He ends up at KCCA, 1990, his first trophy. Now he's gone to KCC. He was actually a top squad for KCC when he went to the league. And then was part of the team that made history with that, that fantastic final against Villa in the Kakungulu Cup. I've talked about it on the show here before. Yeah. I talked about it because of Jackson Manja's goal back then. Yeah. But now I talk about it also because of Sekatawa. Because it was a 3 0 drubbing. Mm. Manja scored that overhead scissors fantastic goal. Sekatawa was on the scorer's sheet as well. Mm. As Charles Becker Masiko, love captain of KCC, those guys mm. ripped Villa apart. Yeah. And uh, actually, Sekatawa was at the, uh, at the center of some controversy because Steve Dogger actually poked him in the eye with a mm. finger and got sent off. Yeah. So Villa finished with 10. <laughs> that was the final. So he won that. That was his first trophy. 1991, he wins the league with KCC, the one which didn't end, the one yeah. I keep talking about here. Yeah. Sekatawa was still there at KCC, won that. Now, what many people don't know, which Sekatawa confessed to me later, was that uh, the reason he left KCC because he wanted to stay there longer. But there was a time, uh, during that season, even if they won the league, during that season, there was a game against Express in which he missed an open goal. Mm. Uh, he, for him, he says it was a bad angle. Everybody else uh, th saw Sekatawa miss because he's Sekatawa. Yeah. Now, Jack Hibali, who was uh, the, the manager at KCC, that uh, controversial man who used to talk uh, uh, Luganda in Rotoro. Uh, mm. <laughs> like uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, Mark, you need to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Express, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> the guy went back to, case, to Express in yeah. uh, 1992. Now I'm talking 92. Goes back to Express. Um, scores some goals. He was actually top scorer for them that year. But then, 93, OT had been making changes. Yeah. 1991, OT had won the cup. 92, he had won the cup again. 93 was Express's first league title in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, from from uh, the, the ones of 76 and 75. With a lot of young players. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Brought in. they were young players. So, Sekatawa mm -hmm. didn't even have a place in the team because now the striking options were, were Robert Aloro and Fred Tamale took over. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they lit Uganda football apart in 93. I mean, they lit it alight, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And they were being aided by young people. James Chilini on the right, Sal on the left. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, Lutiaba yeah. behind them. Yeah. And then back there, they'll bring his Kalunjis, um, uh, Richard Chirumira, and also Mogere Abdul yeah. It was yeah. a very good, good sports young team yeah. for experts that took over. So Sekatao, by the end of that season, Aotika team and Isaac Nkanda, who was the other veteran in the team, there were, they were, they were surplus requirements now. And from then on, for Sekatao, actually, I do, he, do, he didn't play uh, for, for a Ugandan team anymore. But here's some of the stories that happened in between there. Uh, which uh, Mark, goes, I want to give you like uh, two to three minutes. Yeah, I'm to going wrap to I'll yeah, wrap it up in there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that happened is uh, Sekatawa says he went to, he went to Dubai mm -hmm. and did trials. Passed them, came back here and asked for an ITC. And between Express and the Federation, they denied him that. And that uh, he, also, uh, he also went to the UK. A uh, um, guy called KK took him over to the UK. And he did trials there where he actually remembers sharing a training pitch with John Burns. This is something I can't verify myself. Yeah. John Burns, the Liverpool legend at yeah. the time, if you remember. Mm. And that he did very well, came back and asked for his ITCs. And again, these guys couldn't release him. But that was at the time when um, th there was a bit of hanging on to players here. Yeah, but guys had played in the Arab Emirates before. I, I talked about uh, Tom Long and Philip Omoni mm. and, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and the late uh, Jimmy Chironda mm. playing there. And then uh, around that time, then Majid Musi went to, uh, to, to France and started running in 92. William mm. Kemba tried uh, Nantes in France la la a year later. In between, guys were go popping in and out, going. Jackson Mahanja ended up in Egypt. Uh, the Tamales mm. tried their luck somewhere in the, uh, in the Middle East as well, and things like that. I think they even played in Oman. Mm. So anyway, that, that part I couldn't verify. But what I know is that uh, when he started went and he came, he came uh, BMK, the late BMK, who was mm. just late to rest as well a few months mm. ago, mm. Um, gave him a ticket because he wanted out, really, he wanted out of the country. He, the guy gave him a ticket and he went to Japan. He didn't know anybody, nobody was waiting for him and everything. He just wanted to go and hit Cheyo, mm. make some money. Lands at the airport, doesn't know anybody, does it? And, and then uh, when he, they, they gave him one Japanese word to say, uh, which, which would show, I think, maybe that he was seeking asylum or something. So when they let him out there, he was wandering around uh, aimlessly, and uh, an ex-footballer saw him. Oh, he doesn't even remember who this guy is. Mm. So this guy sees him, uh, picks him up, takes him to his house, helps him to get a job, a work, and everything. So you know how those cultures are different, how they, would, they leave cars abandoned with, uh, with kids in the ignition, sometimes even engine was running, mm. open cars and everything. He I was up in Japan. <laughs> yeah, guys, <laughs> you were there. Yeah. Yeah. So guys used to pick up cars, uh, loose cars and all, and send them back to Uganda. But these other things used to happen back then. Mm. He, got, he got one of those and got himself a, a Chigate taxi, mm. uh, took it home and everything. I think they tracked him. <laughs> he doesn't remember. They went after him, uh, got him, um, asked for his work permit. It had expired. Uh, led him to, to the cells and then deported him straight after. So he came back without anything. Yeah. Uh, but nothing. Well, you know how when they deport you, what happens? It's, yeah. it's the clothes you're, you're wearing. Is what you arrive with. Yeah, you can't even go back to your house to yeah. pick up a toothbrush. It's yeah. just, it's like, that's how deportation is. Yeah. <laughs> I never get into that mix. But anyway, so he comes back, but he was determined to not be here. So he goes to Nairobi and starts a life there. Uh, he says, I mean, the, the, he was so famous by that. His name has reverberated so much in the region. Kenyans took to him, uh, talking about him on the radios and everything. And things even ended up in parliament, near parliament at one point. But anyway, he was there. And then at some point, his sister said, you know what, man, you can't, you abandon the house in Akulabi, family and everything. You're living this way and everything. Go back home. She had, uh, she was a businesswoman who was working there and here and all. So she forced him to really come back here. Yeah. He says when he came back, Nakulabi, I mean, that house, his wife sold it and all. The house he lives in right now, in Namasua, somewhere around Freedom City out there, mm. is one which was given to him by a good Samaritan who doesn't want his name mentioned on air. Wow. And uh, he lives out of that with these two youngest kids whom he's struggling to basically make ends Yeah, because uh, I've yeah. met him in the last few years and yeah. he's uh, been in not very good health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a time he was in Mulago Hospital uh -huh. trying to raise money and uh, uh -huh. yeah, very tough life. It's been Sekatawa. tough, yeah, it's been tough. These guys are picking each other up, the ex-internationals, and doing things about the condition in which they live. Yeah. Uh, but he's not happy again even with them. He thinks that uh, they're a bit selfish in what they do. Some of the games is played with them. Uh, there was one, I think, against parliamentarians where he says, I think he walked out with 5K and mm. felt that they had been given some, some money, facilitation. There's one recently they played against the Kenya. Against Kenya, yeah. Yeah, he thinks that it was, uh, there was some sponsorship that came through from al Hadi Musa Chigongo at uh, mm. uh, the NRM vice chair from Mosa Courts and everything. And he, he remembers, I think, the guy's got 20K and things. So he's saying he's not going back to those. And all. So basically, he's living the life of the, that we worry about with most of our ex-footballers yeah. um, who have not 
um, who, who, who life did not prepare for life after football. They didn't somehow prepare for it. I don't know. The same way as this generation. But this is a guy who at one point, everything he touched, he had the minus touch. Everything he touched turned to gold. Goals all over the place. Goals you all know, over the place. Uh, you know, and Mark, uh, the other week um, in the Saturday Monitor, mm -hmm. we, we told a story done by my colleague Sam Poza mm -hmm. about Augustine Barige mm -hmm. and how he's made a life after football. Mm -hmm. um, left football, went to National Water and Storage mm -hmm. Corporation as a debt collector, made some money there. He's gone into business, runs a few petrol stations. I think the side of Gaiazan, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you could tell is someone. Uh, but even he, he tells you one of the things he regrets he doesn't have is an education because he dropped out of school, I think around senior five, you know, and then the restructuring at National Water demanded papers, which he did not have, but he had made enough contacts and enough yeah. skills to go and survive elsewhere. Yes, uh, yeah. Because today I don't think National Water are recruiting uh, S3 graduates mm -hmm. uh, into, mm -hmm. into their company. So it's a difficult one. When I've seen I, Issa Sekata and Mark tells a story, Sometimes I look at him and feel very sad. Mm. Yeah, because my dad has told me about him before. Yeah. Yeah, because my dad always actually joke that when Sekatawa is on the pitch, you don't play back pass. He'll get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll, yeah. He'll get there. That's how so bad because this Sekatawa... Because this defender is passing the ball and he's thinking, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm going to play back pass in Sekatawa. Sekatawa yeah. Yeah. That's how bad he was. Like I told you, he was uh, the mm. ultimate poacher. And uh, the people, people have compared him with we, him. We need this is a guy who dropped out of national team reckoning at about 85. Yeah. When I told you about when his sojourns outside the country, his escapades and all. 92, he had fought, him, fought his way back in when he went yeah. back to... to and won a Sekafa then. He won a Sekafa. He yeah. wasn't part of the 89 one. You yeah. remember the one we won in the Malawi after a long time, after 78, mm. and the one in 90. But mm. 92, he was part of yeah. uh, that one. Uh, so he won himself. So his accolades, funny thing, is came at the end of his career, yeah. at the peak of his powers. Those goals did not bring trophies. But and, and that's when, man, and that's the when guy most of them in. Yeah. actually heard of him because the football that we watched in quotes was already Uganda. <laughs> 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 